That's right, everybody. We are back on the McCullough 170 amp welder. If you didn't check that out, go ahead and type that into the top of uh, YouTube. McCullough 170 arc welder. I can't remember what I named. There's like two videos of me chasing it down, running it on Prime. So a little recap. What you're hearing in the background is we're uh, printing out stuff over there. I'll give you a little sight on that later. What we're doing here is going to go through the carburetor. Uh, last time it wouldn't draw fuel either because of my stupidity. I didn't open up this valve or what. I don't know. Probably the diaphragm is stiffened up in it and that's pretty much a given. But these carburetors are not just your typical one on it. And I'll show you here in the diagram. I should have had it ready. wasn't even thinking. Hopefully that 3D printer isn't too loud. So that's why I'm kind of speaking up a little bit. What's going on with this carburetor is it has the switch here for idle and run. So there's idle. That's just one thing on it. But when this thing's under load, Based on the governor setting, which we'll get to that. I've been soaking that in PB Buster. Hopefully we can try to turn it with a tiny screwdriver. Wherever I did with it. Yep, here it is. So, it's got a little screw in there. It's plastic on metal. It has been soaking in PB Buster and everything. And what that does is as you adjust it, that adjusts your engine speed. And your engine speed determines your amperage output on these. Well, this has also got a vacuum canister on it to help level, maintain when you're on and off. It's It's got a pretty complex setup to maintain that speed under load and whatnot. So you set it and it acts more like a governor. But I'll show you here what I'm talking about, if this book shows it. Uh, all right. Well, first off, here's the carburetor. It's an HL288. We got to take that adapter bottom off to get inside to get the carburetor out because you can't just get to the two bolts that hold it on. So it looks pretty standard, fixed high speed jet. What we've got here is our governor set up for our knob. You twist that knob and it goes up and down. And that adjusts your governor setup, your springs that hook to your carb, and it sets your engine speed. And then, sh 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 sh, trying to find it, around here somewhere, there's a, a canister, vacuum canister set up for it. And what that does is it helps maintain engine RPMs and stuff and irregularities, I guess. So... That's kind of what we're dealing with here, what we're going to have to mess with. Um, the first thing is uh, going to be trying to deal with that. I think my other manual down there had the canister set up and whatnot for the vacuuming. But we'll see it when we get in there. The key is not to destroy any hoses at this point. It looks like just a standard Tildeson carburetor kit. So we're going to cannibalize another brand new carburetor, an 090, because for all purposes. So, anyways, let's go ahead. Let's just get into this. If you watched your video, you kind of know what we're getting into. We're going to hope to be able to adjust this because I want to 3D print a new one of those. But I got to look up how to print threads. And you can print them in the world of 3Ds and everything. And these look like they have pretty coarse threads. So, if we can get that to adjust, we're not going to mess with that at a moment. But we'll see how we can do. So, as it, you can see, it looks like it's been sitting in a barn forever. But the inside here is clean. I've been to this point before on it. Chokes closed. So fuel on and off valve. It's off right now. Turn it out for on. Choke. No choke. 
What else we got going here? Hopefully we ain't got to take that knob off for the choke. I'm really going to hate that if we do. Um, our idle, which down there, you'll see it. Idle. And see how it makes that contact with that arm there? And then that's where you set your governor speeds and stuff, and it's able to rev up and do whatever it wants. So... And it's attached to that spring right here, that bar there, that heads off into La La Land. That's what attaches to other things, not attaches to our idol. So that just disappears in the La La Land, that spring down there. Back here is our vacuum canister, and it attaches to the throttle also. That thing right there. So we're going to investigate it. We'll just leave you guys up there. So we have got to get those four Allens. You can see one of them right here out to be able to pull this up and out of here. So we're going to undo the fuel line, which I've undone that before. Just try not to destroy anything priceless or whatever everything wants. And then this, there's a line that heads back into the case. And then comes back out here. What we're going to take, we're just going to pry that off of the carburetor. Anything attached to this carburetor is coming off. But anything on the saw is going to stay on, so we don't have to really mess with too much. So there's fuel line that's kind of out of the way, hopefully. But for safety... Pressurize the fuel. <laughs> that doesn't actually smell bad, but that's the stuff I had put in. Like I said, I don't know if I had turned the gas on or off, so that might be my mistake if it didn't run. But in that last video, it ran pretty fast when it was leaning out, so I don't know what's going on with that there. But let's go ahead. Let's see, because it's been soaking the last week in PB Blaster. It's absorbed it. I've added more absorbed it, so let's see if it's seized or not. If not, then we might be able to get away with just using a little screwdriver for now. It's got little clips down here on both sides. The other side is missing, as I've observed. Oops. That are meant for the click, click, click action. So. Oh. Oh. Oh, PB did its wonders. <laughs> All right, that feels maxed out. Oh, and it's moving the spring. Down. Down there. So watch that spring down there. So less means slower. See it moving? So tighter means it'll want more throttle. See? All right, that is adjustable. We'll kind of ease up the tension, leave a little bit on. So, all right, that moves. Excellent. So, we're not after a knob immediately. That's going to be our biggest tool for adjusting speed and amperage. All right, getting certain tools down in there. I don't know about the socket head. No. No, hold on. Oh, that's a throttle. That's just gonna be more in the way. Yep, yeah, yeah. and right there. See, I adjust the throttle, and that air actuator helps with. But it looks like it's kinda. It might need a little help lubrication. So, things might just need lubed up after a while here. Alright, well, what Allen size fits into it? It's like one of those, please don't strip out on me. I'm trying to get you back to there. Now we're going to need to get the pliers on that. Say, hopefully that printer's not too loud in the background on y'all. We just need to successfully... And 
kind of acts like it wants to stay seized. I really don't want to force that. I have just enough light to where I can see until I get my hands where I need. Ah, there's one. Confirmed one. Now that other one didn't look like it was stripping, I don't see anything wallowing. Yeah, you have that ever get that feeling like it wants to do it to you? Like the metal starts to give? Because that's what that's giving me. Of course, that one. That one's in a perfect spot. Like, how did you assemble this with a fuel line barb straight in the way? I don't understand. Give you a hint, when that goes back in, it's going to be uh, routed differently. Like, who... I mean, I know it's a European market, but I don't want to say which European did this. Okay, we'll go for this back one here. Because it's somewhat accessible. Hit it on the first try, but not in the right angle. Oh, there it is. There's two. Okay, well, the two back ones are good. don't want to destroy that fuel line. I really don't. It is in good shape. It doesn't show signs of chipping or anything of that nature. Yeah, this is one of those who, how did they install it? Who installed it? And I have a good feeling I'm going to be the first person into this. That's not going to work, you doofus. Let me figure something out. Probably try to crack that screw that the plastic holder's on somehow and rotate this out of the way. And I'll figure out a way to get this other one busted loose here. Once I get them broke loose, then we'll, we'll bring you back. You ever make the decision that something's going to take it, take one for the team? Well, I bent the Allen wrench slightly, moved that plastic over thinking it was going to break, and... Well, it's a pretty tight fit in there. I got this other one undone, and it wasn't a strip feel. It just didn't have that tink of breaking free feel. It was more of a mushy let go. So, took a couple vice grips, bent the Allen wrench ever so slightly. And it's turning. So, guess who's coming out first? Because I don't want to fight it back in. And we're going to take a note, and I'm going to forget, we're going to curve that up ever so slightly enough to be out of the way. Later on, the later models of these had SDC carburetors, which was, must have been really nice. I think we put a GEM-12 on this one and really crank up the power. Uh, uh, I can tell you probably not many Americans worked on these because this was made for in McCullough of Europe and Belgium which I gotta get you know out in the middle of nowhere out in Europe in the 60s it was probably exactly that there was, there was no electricity and stuff you needed portable stuff and gasoline was gasoline and oil it's all you needed to make the farm run I guess when you had some stuff Longest winded bolt that they could put in there, but it's out. And then there's the one that was mushy. We've got the table pulled out here and I scooted you guys over so we can have room to do this. And like I said, I'm talking a little more elevated to go over the 3D printer. I'm printing out an SP125 cover, another one. The other one I did, it would work, but it's it's a little bit of a tight fit. 
because I didn't get the width right when I upscaled. It also didn't scale up the other one properly, so I had to go through and do that. No. Come on, baby. Come on. Everybody wants to see you. Because as far as I know, this is the only McCullough welder that will be on YouTube. Y'all like watching my struggle? Hey, at least we won't have to count how many turns in and out the high need being affixed, but I can understand that. The only way you can really adjust the richness on is if you get a different size jet to run it rich, and it says what altitudes to run and not to run, depending on your jet size. Anybody know what that's for? I should know the answer. A little tube. I should know the answer. Like a breather or something. Prevent vapor lock or something. I should, but I don't at the moment. So if you know what it's for, go ahead and put that in the comments. That'll let me know who's watching and who isn't. You're just going to be fun to put back together, you know that? Oodles and oodles of fun. And struggle. I think it's out all the way though, but I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, it feels out. It just doesn't want to pop up for whatever reason. Yeah, that print's got thirteen hours and twenty six minutes, or around four to five in the morning. I gotta be up at 7, so it'll be two hours done by the time I get to it. Unless I gotta wake up in the middle of the night. Make sure you're all the way. I got everybody messaging me. John, Josh, you know, all them cool people. Chainsaw World. Right. As for the choke here, uh, I kind of guessed it, just staring at it there. It's just a simple, whoops, sorry, pull back, push over thing. So that's all it is. Simple. And we're free. Other than throttle linkage, which I'm trying to figure that out. That looks like a danged old nightmare. Okay, the vacuum actuator is part of it. The assembly. What well, I have the feeling this throttle linkage is going to be the death of me on this. washer here from the Allen. Allen screw wherever I was putting them. Okay, the other one's got it, so we're good. Now, as for that throttle linkage that I was talking about, I hope I never have to get back in this again. You guys watch my struggle from there so I can fight. Alright, there we go. Wait for it. See it? it? Popped off. There's our reeds. They're fiber reeds. Looks like some nasty stuff down in the port. And the gasket, of course, had a tiny little tear in it. Kind of figured we were going to see the reeds. But there's that. Just a straight up intake. In. And there is your reeds. There's your D port. And I think there might be holes drilled in the wall. It's a not it's a 940 engine. It looks like there is. Yeah, they are. Okay, so. So 
All right, it's out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get this back on the ground. We're going to get this on the table here. And we'll go further on into whatever rebuild we were doing. Yeah, Tildesen made in the U.S. It's been out before. There's tool marks. So somebody else has been in here to fight it before me. I just want to thank them for loosening the bolts for me. Yeah, our gasket ripped a little bit there, but uh, I think we're going to be okay. I don't see anything down inside the D-port that's escaped other than just little minute dirt and stuff over the years that's collected. Dirty reed. So We'll get all that cleaned off, but let's get that carburetor rebuilt here. And this thing weighs 55 pounds, so I'm going to have you guys take it away for a moment. I get reset up on everything. I'll have you right back. All right. This seat sits way too high now. I gotta get my knees under. And I did go to the flea market today. And I got some new screwdrivers. Here's one of them. $2 ball peen hammer with a newer handle. Could pass that up. A brass hammer. Johnny's thanking me. And another screwdriver somewhere. I rearranged the tools, got them cleaned up somewhat. All right, let's put that on as bright as we can. We need the 7 16 wrench to get this off of the adapter. Somehow get this off the adapter. You know what we're not going to do? Take it off the adapter. There's no point in that, honestly. Yeah, there's screws down here. So, honestly, no point in taking off the adapter. Bring you guys down just a little closer. Let us go ahead. There's that piece of hardware, that piece of hardware, that piece of hardware went flying. Let's get this other bolt here. Everybody good? All right. This is what I had remade. Those little plastic ones I had made for the Tildeson. It looks like I did good. This is for the uh, air thing. Obviously, I don't know if how well that's supposed to work as an air plunger. Because it leaks air right past it. I don't know if there's supposed to be an O-ring or what in that setup there that's supposed to be good. How much air leak it's supposed to have. So, that's an air canister. But we'll uh, we'll take that off. We'll inspect it, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, saved you guys the pleasure of all the screws coming out. And a quick look at this, it is rubbery, but it's lost its outside shaping, so either we're going to try to coax it back somehow, and oil it real good, or we just got to get it to flare back out properly, so kind of any thoughts on that. Yeah, it looks like really just made of like leather or something, which is no surprise for the 60s. It's so, all right. I saved it. Oh, wait. False alarm. Ugh. That click sound. Like I'm not coming out easily. That's all it is. It's just a canister for vacuum. So, But obviously important to the whole entire setup. Without it, it might not weld too hot. Keep under load, it gets certain load and I don't know. All right. Pop the part. Ah. Yeah, it wasn't sucking any fuel. Oop, oil. Ew. 
I bet it probably was kind of sucking though because it uh yep I lost my train I thought because it was smoky like really smoky on setup but not enough to really do anything so all right somebody's been in here with a little more modern of a kit hopefully we got something that'll work for this if not I guess we're ordering one so there's that now we got to separate let's see that diaphragm Remember, everything's a hammer. Nah, it's flexible. And very flexible. Too stretched beyond belief. But it's completely flexible. I mean, that I am shocked and surprised at. Look at that. But like I say, it's got really bad stretch marks. Um, yep, I said it. So I'm quite surprised it wasn't pumping fuel. But we haven't been through the whole thing yet to see. Now, I know we see on those newer carbs and kits that the needle valve didn't have that special setup. I don't know when last time this was rebuilt, but the diagram, the carb diagram, shows this having this kind of needle set up. So, I don't know. I mean, we might just get away being able to put a new diaphragm. Well, we're going to put new stuff in it, but we'll have to see if the needle and seat work here. The oil adds a nice warming flavor to your warming feeling to your lips. But yeah, needle and seat work. And nicely. Mm, what a nasty flavor. So. Don't want leaks and reusing this because this gasket looks absolutely compressed. Come on. Big money no whammies. Uh, got it. Alright, how many turns is this? Low slash idle mixture is what they call it. So. So. Half. Three quarter. So three quarters of a turn. It's pretty gooey on the inside, so that's probably why it wasn't pumping fluid too well. It's there's a O ring in there. We gotta get the high speed out. <sighs> The high speed jet is down inside there. I don't have a. <laughs> I might have bought one. I don't know. If I don't have one, then I'm just going to sit there and. Which I doubt I do. No? Oh, we got her. I know y'all wanted to see this. So did I. So That's just no more than a plug. But your high speed is six miles down in there. Don't want to lose that. That is... Must be copper. Uh, no, it looks like that orange rubbery stuff. There it is. That is your high speed jet. And it looks clean. Thanks, <sighs> he's straight through it. All right, 
I need to get the pick out. I'm still like figuring this out, figuring out this hole. Because I don't want to spray it and have that. And or that flying out into La La Land. Without that, we're going to have a bad day. Needle and seat seem to be good. Choke. Okay, so there's our valve, what I was asking about earlier, shoots down to there. But... I bet that's how it gets its outside air source for... I'm curious now, now that I remembered it. So it goes. You know, I just had this apart. All right, so it goes up through there, through here. Where does that go? Why am I having such a hard time putting this back? There we go. Anyways, I'll figure it out. Let's go get this sprayed out. All right, took the liberty of taking the kit out of one of the carburetors, at, out of the 090, and it is an actual, uh, it says on it that it's, at, that it is an actual Tildeson. I lost the part that actually says it, but it actually feels a better quality than China ones, the ones that don't have anything on them. So, anyways, cleaned out, everything's good. Checks out good. Needle seats like it should. Oh, what does that do? Leads right un underneath the diaphragm for the air. Instead of it passing through another way, they had it go through here. And I don't know if that's created by vacuum to suction up or whatever to keep it full on open. Instead of it pumping nonstop, it just holds the needle open for consistent fuel flow. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure somebody else can chime in on that. This is a brand new kit. It's never been, that carburetor was never ran. I used the parts out of it. These plates match up. This is the old one. Yeah, instead of it uh, getting its air from another source, it just leads directly underneath the diaphragm instead of... Well, we'll double check that to be sure if I don't gotta add a hole here before we button up things too far. Nope. So same old diaphragm, same everything there. Well, yep, yeah, yeah, holes lined up. I was looking at the wrong spot. So lines up there. This one is plugged to go underneath instead of it. It draws it. it draws it directly through the drilling there instead of. going through the carburetor and have any like vacuum chamber or something, I guess. So. Kind of see where everything go lays in the place here because it was together, but like I said, never ran. I 
did that. Having one of them brain attacks. Yeah, because the valves need to be on that side. Right? Now you're all making me think. No, we're good. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Remember that? We're going to reclock that. Here in a bit. So I'll get the screws back in here, get that reclocked, get the jets in. Well, they have you with the jets, but getting these six screws in is boring. So bring you right back. Okay, I decided to take that back piece off. Kind of good idea. It's a little dirty. But what I noticed, this one is unmodified. See, Tildeson. Note how the gasket is on top of the metal screen. This was opposite. Somebody had this metal screen on top of this gasket. And that's a no-no because that's not going to allow things to seal up properly. So I don't know how this thing ran, but it was running. So I figured I was going to uh, point that out. You know what? We're going to look at the quality of the plastics here. And we're just going to do it. We're going to put this new one on here just for the sake of not having to get back in here. And because it also says Tilda Sunrite on it. And clocking it up slightly. That's much better. So one of those glad I did. So there we are. Carburetor rebuilt. We have got to look into this next. And it looks like it's just a piece of leather. I don't really know how you'd re-moisturize something like that. I mean it. Soak it in lubricant for a while, maybe. Possibly. Got that blaster stuff, that all purpose. So, I don't know. Find something soaking in, I guess. See this cap? The cap just became it. So it looks like it's just a piece of leather, and we'll let that soak a little bit, and see if it'll perk back up for us or not. Alright, it's been soaking here for a little bit. Looks like it might be coming back to life. Yeah, it's taking in moisture as you flex it, because you can see it try to... Uh, well, let's go ahead. Oh, yeah. Very nice fit inside the cylinder there. When it stays straight... Holds a vacuum. Holds a vacuum very nicely, so. so. I think. I think we're gonna be okay here. Get a little flex outward here. Let me 
because it looks like it moved maxed right out right there and then so we'll go ahead and put that back in there take this and put it back onto here I don't know if you can see that, but it's holding now. So it has, for now, been brought back to life with a little bit of PV blaster, all multi-purpose, yeah, multi-purpose lubricant. Just a little bit of soaking in that for a while. Brought the leather, I guess, I'm going to call it leather, it's what it looks like, back to life for that cylinder. So that is set. If it was rubber, it probably would have, you know, petered out on me. Oh, yeah. So. See, it wants to snap back because of holding a really good vacuum there. So, that is sealed. That, we got to get the jets back in here Some people would frown upon that. Hopefully, like say you can hear me over the printer. It's doing pretty decent. It looks like a giant, like weird honeycomb at this point. So, lightly seated, half, three quarter ish. This has a point oh. Four one, I think is what I remember reading. Yep. Point oh four one jet. Says something like 0 0.039, don't run around certain elevation. If you want it to run rich, then run at this other type of number. So if you want it to smoke like a freight train, Rebuilt. So now I'll get this all cleared and we will go ahead and ahead of time I'll uh, put a little bit of oil into here just to keep that moisturized. It ain't going to hurt nothing either. Yeah, so let's hope. Everything is going to be good enough to at least have a test run on this. So, get this cleared. We'll get this back into the welder. And maybe a test run sometime. At least if I can get it set to run, I can adjust the speed on it and everything, then that'll be step one. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. While the carburetor is out go ahead and take this line off ever so gently. I'll put my own line on it. Okay, screwdriver put itself away. And blow into it and see if, make sure this passage is clear. Well, sucking on it, you get a nasty flavor. Okay, so 
But whatever it is, it's clear. That's the fuel tank, if we remember right. So now we gotta fight that carb linkage. Back on. Enjoy. But first, we're gonna grow a brain. And we're gonna put a dab of seal wall on that gasket that just barely tore, just barely. A little tiny crack. You're never gonna notice it. Sorry about that there. I uh ran out of space on the SD card. I gotta get through, go through and delete more pictures, but I had a bunch of videos and stuff uh, to get rid of, so. I had stitched up that gasket somewhat. Our biggest fight is going to be putting this linkage back on to the carburetor. And luckily they only give me one hole here to have to fight with. And that's in. All the fuel lines and everything. Everybody happy. We're moving. Going right along. Choke. Is there. We're going to undo it for a minute because it kind of wants to have a little push resistance on the bolts. I can barely see myself to put that in there. I am way off. And there's the first. Did clocking that up help? Minutely. There's two. Now this is where my special screwdriver that I've lost will help. It has a gripper thingy on it. Just standing up. There's another one. And for the final bolt, before cinching everybody down. Trust me, I'm struggling to see it. And there that one is. All right. It helped. It helped clocking that helped a ton. So I'm gonna get these tightened down because the time's sake for the SD card. Cause I got about 20 minutes left on it, and I'll bring y'all right back after we get stuff back in its home. It comes back to me. It's a crack in the fuel line here. So we'll have to make something work force that one over that do something like that anyways so before we do anything get the old line here tossed back on haphazardly Okay, well the on and off valve works. Fortunately, this line is no good. It's cracked, so we'll have to make one. I'll just heat it up, heat it up, and then expand it a little bit with, with some pliers, and then that's kind of how I make that work. And then the other end, I'll just heat it up and sh twirl it down to make it smaller. All right, new one made. Uh little sketchy. I, uh, it's, it's big for it. So a little bit, I tried zip ties. I didn't seal it off. It, it helped, but it still leaked. It was going to suck air. So seal all around the tube 
and then seal all around. I thought about putting another zip tie on, but I think this will hold. It's just got to cure for 24 hours, and there's no starting it tonight or anything like that anyways. It's daylight savings time, and we've lost that daylight. So, But one thing i got to show you guys, when I was looking into the tank... Right there. That is a giant nut for the hold down for the pickup. So somebody's definitely been inside this tank to repair stuff, at least had the top half off, but I, I don't see any toolings on this outside stuff. But they've had it off enough to where there's tool marks here, so maybe they, yeah, they did. And replaced the lines on it, and it might have been a problem that that floated up real bad with the fluid, so they added that to weigh it down. So it doesn't appear to be leaking or anything like that. The valve holds, and it's fluid and everything, and shuts off, so. The vent does work somewhat on it. But that, I'm going to say, is rebuilt. I don't know how well it's going to run yet. But we're going to kind of just leave the top off of it for now. Um, I'm not going to put it on permanently or anything, because when we go to run it, the air filter is just absolutely dirty. But when we go to run it, we will take that top off and make sure to give it a little prime fuel and choke it and stuff like that. And the good thing about the clear fuel lines is you'll see if it's pumping, and that's what I like about them. Even though it's vinyl, it's not made for it. It'll hold its shape after it hardens up and everything. So, But everything's on there. I routed it intentionally underneath of the choke so that it holds its shape better so it doesn't kink. So, Alright. I want to thank you for watching. I'm going to take a sneak back there on what's going on a lot of support for that i did not know that was going to happen so i uh, just want to thank you all for watching and hopefully we will see this thing at least running off a of tank fuel and in the hopefully near future it possibly welding i've got a i've already looked into what the connectors are on the back what they kind of look like i mean these are the welding cables i have they were the cheapest ones on ebay but they should hold the current they're like 300 amp but that doesn't reach in there enough to lock, but it's got like that same similar, just needs to go further in. So we'll get that figured out. I'll go through eBay, look around and go from there and whatnot. So, but cables, they were like 22 bucks. They should, it says 300 amps, it should be able to handle this no problem. So, all right, thanks for watching.